Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And we have here 05 Mercedes E350. I actually worked in this car last week. That's when we started. Um, we replaced the central getaway. And now the customer wants to keep going. So I'm going to try to see what else can be fixed at this point so we can get close enough so this car is running um, well enough for this customer to leave, I guess. Um, the one thing that this car does all the time now is when you put the key on and it's actually doing it randomly, but when you put the key on, if, if you hear this clicking, that's the walking mechanism here in the EIS, electronic ignition switch. And it's supposed to lock this key right here and, and unlock it when you try to pull it or, you know, get it in. And sometimes it's, it's, it's not working. It's almost like you put it in and it's not recognizing that there is a key in sight. And... Of course, you cannot turn it and, you know, the car will not start. So when you have this um, situation, um, I actually just um, scanned the car and I'm getting, I got these messages of no can communication right here with the EIS. And then we have another one, automatic air conditioning. Then we have the third one is the cluster module which is the actual cluster right there and then we have another can communication with the EIS right here and I have done a few of these EISs um, and what happens with them is with time um, sometimes just because of being rusted I guess a little bit rusted maybe from humidity but most of the time I've seen this probably with the usage with time of turning and non turning turning and turn you know turning back whatever uh, on and off on and off um, the welds inside the plate of this EAS gets um, kind of the welds get broken so what I got a green light to do again is to disassemble this because in order for you to replace this um, you cannot do it in, in any regular shop Actually, probably most shops are not going to be able to do it because you need to have a special license uh, because this EIS uh, comes programmed with a key and I don't think they're going to program your keys that you already have. So you're going to need to get, I think, a new key. I may be mistaken about it, but I, I, I believe that's what the procedure requires. And of course, that requires the whole thing to be registered with Mercedes. So this is actually a dealer item or dealer procedure only. Um, at this point so I'm gonna try to disassemble this and see what's going on most likely I'm guessing that the welds are gonna be broken and I'm gonna have to re-weld this so it's not a crazy procedure but the crazy part is actually getting this CIS out of here uh, because it sits right behind this trim panel most of the time and it's kind of in a, in a really really crazy place uh, where it sits and it's kind of difficult to get it out this ring will need to come out um, I need to use like a pair of pliers and just get them in here and twist it and it'll unlock this and then the unit will come out um, the thing is I need to see whether I can get it through the radio or I can need to get it from underneath okay now we need to get here into the kick panel so we need to remove the it has these three t20 torques or t25 sorry torques that we have to remove to get to the eis And remember, you're gonna have 
A um, couple of things here. We're gonna have actually the central gateway and you're gonna have the OBD. Uh, let me see, I believe I can get through here because uh, it's just right here. And what this thing here is, in order to get this out, you have this ring here. I believe there's a special tool that they use like a cylinder thing. But I've managed to use the uh, pliers with uh, some tape um, so that I don't end up scratching the plastic. This has worked so far. So um, it's no point to get for me to get the tool because um, this will come out like that. All we need to do is just kind of um, kind of push it and and when it catches it'll start spinning around and here we go it just has these four it has these four teeth that they catch that's it and okay actually I just pushed it in so I believe I can even see on the bottom um, there's space there, so let me see if I can get underneath and get it out. Okay, um, if you manage to put your hand back here, um, you can actually catch it and slide it out through, I think there's a bracket there or something, and now here you're going to have um, one I believe it's an optical connection then you're gonna have a couple plugs so you need to disconnect all of these before you can get it out and I believe there was say this plug here had a special way to disconnect it uh, the optical connection I need to see what it was and let me try to disconnect the other okay I disconnected the big one and okay the small one is here there's a blue connection right here I disconnected this big one and then you have the blue one here and the and the fiber optic okay the optical connection has this weird setup that in the back here there are two legs on the left and right you need to push the legs inwards toward the cable and push the actual thing out forward then it will come out um, this is how it actually mounts here through these through these steps here and this is what it looks like here so we need to push forward in order to get it out um, this is actually a mechanism it's not fiber optic um, it's a manual plastic um, it's a manual plastic mechanism that locks it that clicks okay we got it out so in our case we need to do what we did before I need to disassemble this open this and get to these legs here and possibly the main electrical plate well not possibly but the main electrical plate where I can reweld the connections okay guys you need to Get a flat screwdriver, a small one, start unclipping this housing here all the way around. Once you unclip it, you're going to be able to actually get access to the plate. This is the plate right here. And then also you have a couple of these Torx bolts. Um, they're T20 Torx. And you need to open them because you need to get full access to the whole plate. And... You're gonna see some dirt, dust, whatever, all these. Okay. Um, once you get this out, 
you need to possibly get a magnifying glass if you don't see um, I'm not gonna inspect this because I'm not getting into the electrical stuff into this unit what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna you know possibly call it imp improvisation or improvise uh, because I've done it before and it has worked with me so I'm gonna weld re-weld or re-solder all these big connections the ones here they're for this unit here um, the ones here the three big here all the small ones back here they're actually for the electrical plugs for the connectors the ones here also for the other connector here and I need to see the big ones on this connector are actually these here one two three four these big ones so you need to try to resolder these and for me it has worked before and it has been it has been able to I have been able to repair these by resoldering these I guess what happens is with time with all this with this whole mechanism moving left and right left and right uh, these will um, unsolder themselves or break off the the actual plate the plating on this on this electronic uh, plate okay so I'm going to go and resolder them and in a minute well a few minutes I'll be back when I start putting this back together and I'm gonna install it in the car okay guys I just finished resoldering these and as you can see right here um, I resoldered I renewed or resoldered the connections right here I also did these two um, and these these and then these um, also this one so all these big ones and the small ones that go to the to the actual connectors here and these three main big ones are to this unit here um, and also these three they have these copper wiring coming from from the actual front part and next thing is we have to install it uh, back inside the housing so I'm I actually forgot to weld this middle one but anyway you get the point these big ones these big ones here these big ones and then you have the small ones here and the small ones here and here we go we need to put it back and this goes only one way when you see where this thing is placed you're going to be able to tell and also the two bolts so you push it in once you get it in again these are the bolts the t20 and you don't need to get them too tight just enough so that they, they hold because remember this is plastic in the back you don't want to strip the plastic Go. and then it's all a matter of just clicking this back in nothing crazy the legs have to go through remember here inside here and here and here we go it's just one click check make sure and check these all these teeth are in the right places okay and it seems that everything is fine okay and now all we gotta do is just put it back inside the inside the place in the car remember this is the mechanical clip right here um 
I believe the blue clip was right here and then you have the black one here um, as you can see the blue one will only go in one place because there's one tooth right here and the placement of this tooth right here is in a different place so you cannot actually make a mistake and here we go remember we pulled it out from the front so you start from the front and you need to get in the right place so it'll push back You need to kind of push this a little bit um, by pressing the mechanism there because it's spring loaded. You need to get it in first and then push this a little bit forward so it'll go in and then clip back in. And now we have to find the other two wires. So we have the blue one here, blue one is here. Okay. And then we have the big, the big black one. And it's right here. Okay, I just clipped it. And all you gotta do is you need to fish it back in upwards. To get to this place to the hole and once you get it in you're gonna have to use the the little locking ring to actually install it in place and then you we can get it tight and locked so with one hand down and the other one holding this ring here remember the ring goes just straight through in um, the place it's this this EIS in the back will play a little bit but remember you need the orientation of the key the key usually is right it's toward it has this a little bit to the left angle and once you kind of you place it in you'll be able to fill it with your fingers inside that it's actually in place and when you get it in place um, all you have to do is you need to start spinning this ring and you can do it with your fingers and then once you do it with your fingers then you can you can use your your tool or in my case I'm going to use these pliers and lock this enough that so that it doesn't move okay and it seems that I'm okay I don't need to lock it anymore it's in good shape it's not gonna move and now we need to remember we need to install this trim panel down here that has the the T25 Torx and first we need to um, install it in the back in the back there is just like a little plate that the back panel sits on and then the front part goes up Okay, everything is still connected, everything is fine, so 
I'm going to install the middle bolt first. going to connect our scanner so we can see if we have still the codes and this is a good sign that it's working it's working right away and I'm gonna turn it on Turn this and let me crank this engine for a second and I'm going to, in order to erase actually the codes I need to turn the engine off and in contact and then I have the voltage connection okay so I need to erase all the codes and scan them again. Okay. I'm gonna get out of this because I need to scan it again. Scan it again. Okay, guys, we just got done with the scanning and electronic or EZS or EIS electronic ignition switch pass, no fault. So here we go. We managed to fix it again. Um, again, this is a shot in the dark, but I would rather do it than you know uh, send the customer to the dealer before I can try this repair because again it's a very expensive repair at the dealer and you have to change keys this and that programming hundreds possibly a thousand two thousand dollars I'm not sure exactly but again this is the actual thing so we have a pass and again we have codes on this car more but they're different codes what's important we don't have anything from the cluster anymore and we don't have anything from the ignition switch and this is the repair another good repair remember this car is actually a project at this point uh, trying to get or fix uh, we're trying to fix as much as we can and um, it's a you know work in progress but this is this procedure that you can do and try to fix your EIS by yourself um, I believe this doesn't it doesn't require you to be an extremely skilled person yes you do need to have some skills but you should be able to do it and you know solder it and fix it hopefully this works for you um, it works for me most of the time I've had one or two that it didn't work but so far about 80% of the times this has worked and again Thanks for watching guys, thank you very much, please like my videos and please subscribe, thank you.